So I'll just give you a really quick summary of last week, the talk that I accidentally didn't film. Um, the third problem in these problems we've been talking about is how often we hear God's word like from a teacher or something and then we forget it the next day or it just doesn't really stick in our minds and change us, right? Um, I, I mentioned that survey that the Barna Group did in 2008 where they discovered that approximately half of the people in the United States who claim to be Christians, they believe whacked out stuff. Like they believe that Satan doesn't exist, uh, Jesus sinned, the Holy Spirit isn't real, and then about a third of the people who say they're Christians say, yeah, the Bible is true, and so is the Quran and the Book of Mormon. Right? Like, a little disconnect there. They're just, there's, some, there's, some illog there's, there's some illogical stuff happening there, right? And so it's the question of, like, how do you get God's truth to stick? And that's, that's a big question. Um, we talk to about just how, like, every one of us as we go throughout the day, like, we have so many voices coming at us from every direction. It's like everything is preaching at us. Like, the radio, like, is preaching at us. Power 99 FM is preaching at us. When you think about it, there are messages being sent through every song, right? And it's really hard sometimes. Like, God wants to get our attention. It's like he, but like, okay, marketers use the term punching through the clutter because there's so many people that w everything wants to get someone's attention. And we just learn to tune most of it out. Advertising, advertising, just tune it out, right? And sometimes we end up tuning the good voices too, like God's voice. So marketers say, you gotta try and punch through the clutter. And that's the big question for us. How do we punch through the clutter to reach people? Um, Malcolm Gladwell, in his book, The Tipping Point, he said, it's by making it sticky. How do you make something, an idea sticky, so that it sticks in someone's mind, so that it'll, it'll stay with them, they'll remember it, right? Um, I think the entertainment industry does the best job of doing that, because, because they create films and they tell stories that are very sticky. They stick in our minds, we talk about them with our friends, and they change our worldviews. They change the way we think and do life. They change what we think is normal, right? So here's the question. How can we be smart like the entertainment industry? Remember Yeshua? He, he told this story about a dishonest manager, and then he said, that guy was smarter than you guys, basically. He said, the sons of this world are more cunning than the sons of light. Basically, he was saying, I want you to be, I want you to be smart too. I want you to be cunning. I want you to think strategically. So, you know, how can we do that? How can... How, how can we make God's word sticky? How can we make Yeshua's message sticky? And um, here's, here's the conclusion for you. How, how is this for doing like a really sweet condensed version of my talk last week? Here's the conclusion. It's actually from a professor at Stanford and a researcher at Harvard who were brothers, uh, Chip and Dan Heath. They tackled that question. Why do we remember some things and we don't remember other things? And here's what they said. What you are most likely to remember are stories. And then they made an acronym. The acronym is SUCCESS. The acronym is SUCCESS for the kinds of stories that we remember. Sticky stories. He said they're, they're simple, unexpected, concrete, credible, emotional stories. Yes. There's only one S in success there. But basically, I'm not going to break down all of those, but for those of you who are just listening to this talk online or whatever, just, just ask yourself that. How can you tell the stories from God's word, word of mouth, in ways that are simple, that are unexpected, that are concrete, that are credible, and that are emotional? Because that is what is going to stick in people's minds. If we want to change the culture, if we want to get God's word to actually stick, like, like the media does such a great job doing, that's going to help. So there's some wisdom for you from Chip and Dan Heath. And then I finished that talk by reading a story from um, Truth That Sticks. It's a pretty short story. Can I read it again to you guys? About the little boy who didn't look like he was paying attention, but then he totally floored his grandpa. Yeah, let's, let's read that short story one more time, and that'll be the last thing I do for this talk here. Um... All right, so they say, this is, what, this is the story. In a home group at Real Life Ministries, the leader told the story about Jesus asking Peter to launch out into the deep water and then to follow him and catch men. During the interactive dialogue, the leader asked the members what they would be doing if they had been at the Sea of Galilee the day Jesus got into Peter's boat. An eight-year-old boy who was there with his grandfather said, I'd be skipping rocks. But he listened intently to the story and the entire dialogue. When they got home, the boy arranged three chairs in his upstairs room and called, Grandpa, come up to my room. I have something to tell you. He told him the story just as he'd heard it and then imitated the leader and asked, 
What do we learn about God in this story? What do we learn about people? What should we do because of this story? This kid asking his grandpa this. His grandfather noticed how the room was set up and asked, what is this other chair for? The boy responded, I'm going to learn another story next week, and I think I have friends who'd like to hear my stories. So there's a, there's a boy where that story stuck, and he was going to get it to stick on some more people too. Yeah, Sweet, eh?